Emma. I'm here with Shannon at Screen Supply Central in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and we're here in the store ready to talk about uh, the services Shannon has and the products that she can provide and talk about, um, kind of see, get an insight of the process um, behind the scenes. Uh, how are you doing, Shannon? I'm good. Great. Um, so I've seen a little bit about your store, um, but why don't you give insight to everyone else, um, kind of what you can provide and what you're all about here at Screen Supply Central. Absolutely. So we are a store that sells supplies to people who are doing mostly garment decorating. So if you want to put something on a shirt, you want to make it sparkle or pretty, uh, customized shirts for your family, or if you're a screen printer and that's what you do for a living and you need a vendor who's gonna answer all your questions, um, help you pick the right product for your shirts, um, then this is the place to come. We have vinyl supplies for the cut and press industry and we also have screen, sorry, screen print supplies for those people who are doing a screen print process, either large or small. So. I have customers who have thousand shirt jobs every day, and I have customers who are doing maybe 10 shirts a day, or even just doing things for fun for birthday parties or crafts. Nice. Um, but so you do uh, garments for like clothes and everything, but what else can you um, print on? Well, honestly, so we, we have embroidery supplies, we have rhinestones, we have the chemicals and the screens and things to screen print, we have vinyls. Um, but you can apply a lot of the products we have to any, I always tell people, if you can get it to stick to a surface, then you've been successful. So I've got a lot of products that you're going to see um, on signs, uh, decorating windows. We got people who'd make mugs out of the glitter products that we have or the decal vinyls that we have. They'll, um, you can sublimate on wood, you can sublimate signs. We have all the processes to do that. So the extent of what we do kind of extends outside fabrics although fabrics are pretty extent uh, extensive there's tent materials stadium seating those sorts of things umbrellas i've seen printed with products that we have um, but then there are signs and and windows and doors and all of those things that are non-textile that you can use our products on as well pretty much everything if you, <laughs> yeah if you need to make something colorful um, we have probably got a way to make it happen. Nice. Uh, what is your favorite um, like item to make, or what is one of your favorite things that you like to do? Um, so because of what I do, because I'm really just a retail store, I'm selling stuff to people who are getting to have all the fun. So I don't get to do a lot or use a lot of the product that I sell on a daily basis. Um, so the, the fun things that I do get to do is when we get new product in, which we did just pick up a brand new vendor called Specialty Materials, and they have an array of products that we hadn't had before in all kinds of different colors. And so we've been cutting a lot of material um, with our Jaguar, which is a cutting system. We run your vinyls through. It will plot it out, and you weed it, heat press it to a shirt. So I'm demoing today one of those newer products, which is a color shifting material. That's a lot of fun. Um, on the Instagram, Screen Spy Central, if you go there, we just posted a shirt the other day um, made out of material that we're calling Grandma's Couch. And it looks pretty crazy, somewhat hideous. Uh, if you see it as a roll, we made the most awesome shirt with it. So those things are fun. Um, but my absolute favorite of all things to do in this shop is to make custom PMS colors. Mm -hmm. So screen printers, when they're printing, they're going to be laying down one color per screen. And the standard color palette is available through most vendors with Plastisol ink. So Plastisol is what you put on your shirt. Um, it cures at 325 degrees, and it's, it's a plastic product, basically that's been liquefied for printing processes. Um, but they're going to use your standard, maybe your 32 box Crayola set kind of colors, and that's what you get. Um, with the custom PMS system, I can make any color that exists. And I always tell people I can make it, and I can probably make it sparkle too. And so I have that challenge of when somebody asks for me for an ink to just 
make it and make sure it's perfect. I've had people all the time look at it because they're always speaking over my shoulder when I'm making inks and they're like, oh, it looks pretty good. I'm like, yeah, pretty good's not gonna work. I want it to be perfect. But I love to play in my colors. It's my absolute favorite thing to do. It's fun. Um, Super fun. Yeah. But you get to come and kind of see what you can create if you haven't created it before. It's kind of like a challenge. Sure. That, it is. It's so fun. And so we, I have customers that bring me things. I had a customer bring me a Matchbox car once, and they wanted a custom color because they were literally going to print that car on a T-shirt, and I was able to make that happen. That was really fun. Um, it might be um, a favorite toy that they're trying to match. I've had somebody want me to match their car color before so they could wear a shirt that matched their real car. Um, and then one of my main customers that I mix uh, for is a person who takes the newest shoe that's been released and then he prints t-shirts that match those shoes. And so I have a big play in that. If you've got shirts that match your shoes, I might have made your ink. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, so. Uh, just so happens, I'm also a bit of a sneakerhead. I like to uh, collect shoes and kind of try to get the hottest shoe if I can. Um, and so today, uh, if we can, would you be able to match the color of the shoes I have on? Definitely. All right. We will awesome. make that happen. Um, and just so that folks can see what I have on today, uh, here's the shoe that I have on. Um, is this off-white shoe um, so I was going with the yellow shade um, okay is that okay it's perfectly fine honestly cool. the orange is kind of a pre-mix that would be boring you could probably get that out of the bucket because it's basically new and orange that's right. no problem um, and the blue while possible is really hard so I'm glad you didn't pick that <laughs> right. one because it might take us all day to be get here there. for a while yeah the the, the yellow off-white one's gonna be perfect oh, good. Us, okay so no problem great um, and then I was just curious of all the things that uh, you've mixed for people. What is maybe one of the craziest asks that you've got from one of your customers? So obviously I've mixed a lot of different things, but one of the, the weirdest things, and it's not something that I normally do, but because I do color, I was able to perform this task. Um, I had somebody come in one day. We are open on Saturdays, but it's in the beginning of our Saturdays, um, we didn't start that until May. It was kind of slow. And so I got a call from someone and he wanted to match a color to paint his kitchen. And I don't sell paints, although maybe I'll get there. Um, he, he might have inspired me for my next endeavor. But he wanted to paint his kitchen and he was not able to get the paint color from the paint store the way he wanted it. And I said, well, bring down what you want and let's see what can happen. So he brought me this piece of drywall and he brought a flashlight that had a blue light in it. And he shone the blue light on the drywall and he said, I want my kitchen walls to look like that when with the light on it, but with that, that's what I want my kitchen to look like, this blue on this drywall. And I was like, okay, let's see what we can do. So I have some dyes in the back because along with everything else we do there's a lot of printing happening and we actually sell inks that go into printers so if you're going to do one of the processes with printing shirts is a transfer so you can put a piece of paper into your printer and literally print a picture out on that paper and then heat press the paper onto your shirt and it's a real thin process it doesn't feel like the old-fashioned transfers that you might get in the cereal box back when i was a kid they're soft and they feel good and they look pretty and they actually last a really long time so if you're looking to do just like a grandma's birthday shirt or birthday shirts for your kids christmas family a lot of times family reunions unfortunately lately a lot of memorial shirts are getting done that way but you can just run it through your inkjet printer but inkjet ink is really expensive. It's super expensive. So we have a process where we put refillable cartridges in the printer and we fill it with ink. And that way it is significantly less expensive. So with having those inks that go in that printer, I thought, let's see if we can't make paint for this guy. So I have a clear gel dye base. It's kind of, it's kind of slimy and, and a base, like almost like Vaseline. And I took that product and I took a blue cyan dye and we mixed it together and it was absolutely paintable. And it had a little bit of a transparent look to it, which was good because that's the color that he wanted was this very bright, light, 
kind of cyan blue thing going on. So we painted it on his drywall and we added the cyan till it was the shade of the color that he wanted. The guy was ecstatic. He took his drywall and he went home with his paint. And he, I hope, painted his entire kitchen and was very happy, but that is probably the nuttiest thing wow, I've ever done. I love that. The yeah. things people come up with. So it, and it worked. It, it was probably one of the very few ways that he was going to get what he wanted, but he, he, he got it, whether he right. liked it or not. <laughs> Once he got home, I don't know. But yeah, I hope he painted his kitchen and realized that that's actually what he wanted. Yeah, I know. And I was thinking the same thing. I was like, it's, it's cute, like, here, but that's a lot. It was a very blue blue for a kitchen, so. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Um, well, all right, if you want, we can go and check out your, um, I guess your shop. Yeah. And see what things look it's like back my, there. my mixing station I is what that. we call it. Your so I've, I've been coined a lot of things. Um, my mixing ink uh, is branded as Color Girls Ink. So people call me Color Girl only because I have colors all over me all the time. So I've just kind of been known as the Color Girl. And because I make random colors for people even for painting their walls. Um, so the Color Girl brand is where we're going, but people have also called me the mixologist because um, for, for the purpose of screen printing, so I am definitely the mixologist. So we're gonna go visit Color Girl's mixing station and see what we can do. All right, I'm excited. All right, awesome. <laughs> All right, so we are back here at Shannon's mixing station where you can see she has a bunch of colors and inks that she works on mixing together, but we have my shoe bagged here for safety and she is going to match it to the yellow here. So I'm gonna let Shannon mix it up and explain kind of her, her process to the madness back here. So I'm gonna put some gloves on to just protect my my fingernails really because it the ink is so invasive i somehow even though i wear gloves every time end up with my gloves off and my hands all inky anyway but i feel like at least we've eliminated whatever was on the glove when i stopped like that is at least not it's like you know i'm, I'm, I'm res resisting a little bit of ink when i do that so when i start when i'm looking at ink they make ink mixing systems they have ways to measure um on a scale and put certain percentages of ink into a mixing system and then they'll they'll use typically a a drill and a like a concrete mixing blade to okay. stir those up um, there are formulas scientifically measured to make that happen and in the beginning of my ink mixing like world i thought okay that's the right way to do it so i would had a scale and i put a piece of uh, silicone paper on it and I'd weigh all the ink and I would mix it up and it would not be perfect and I was like that was very sad to me so then I would have to figure out what I had mixed wrong or was there something else I needed and I did that for probably about a year and I finally thought you know I'm spending a lot of time trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong when I'm doing what they're doing maybe I should just start doing what I'm doing and see if I can't figure it out. Maybe they're they're wrong and I'm right. right. And so I abandoned the weighing and the scales and the mixing systems and even looking at a formula. And I just started using inks that I thought would make sense. And I was grossly wrong a lot of the time for a little while. It took me probably another year to figure out when you start with this, that's what you're gonna end up with. But I played because when you make mistakes, you learn a lot. So mm -hmm. I made a lot of mistakes. I had a lot more than this sitting on the table because I'd make an ink and it was wrong. And it's hard to back up sometimes. So it's like if you have white and you add black, it's no longer white and you can't ever get it white, white again. And the same is true with a lot of colors. If you start with an ink and it's got something in it and you don't even know it's there, you if you didn't need that color you have to start all over again so we did that a lot so i've gotten in the last 12 years of mixing ink quite a bit better at knowing where to start so whenever i have a project like this a shoe i'm going to make or mixing even just to my standard pms book i um, will come back here and i'll look at my containers and i'll say do i have anything that isn't going to be the wrong direction so it's like okay i can start with this and i just coincidentally have this sitting on the shelf and it's 
it's a good start. It's a good base for this. Nothing in here is going to mess up where we're going. Um, if I can't find that when I'm mixing ink, then I just go get a clean quart and we start over. And I'll, I do try to find one that I'm willing to part with and throw away <laughs> at that point, because you got to have a little bit of working room on your table. So I'm starting with a color that's not going to be irrevocable. And I know basically the majority of this is white. It's a light color and you'll be sometimes surprised at how much white is in something and how little color. And the problem with uh, mixing a lot of times you just think oh that's yellow so it's going to be mostly yellow and then you put a whole lot of yellow in and then you end up with a gallon because you had to add so much white to get it back so we're not going to go that far today so I'm going to start just with the white um, in my ink so we will just keep adding the yellow and see wow. if we get there yeah we're going to get there because in the bucket, it looks lighter than and, when you put it next to the shoe. Yes, and always the color of the ink that you're going to see in the container. So I, I have that happen all the time. I'll go to show them the customer that have made their ink and I hand it to them and it looks so much different than what it's going to look like on the paper that people like look at me um, until they're accustomed to the fact that they know that's what it's going to do and they know that I wouldn't give them a product that isn't exactly right. right so i guess it's kind of like when you swatch paint on your wall before oh. you paint your entire wall it's kind of similar very much or you know you open the paint can and you're like it looks white and then you paint it on your wall and it's very gray or it's very blue mm -hmm. or whatever that's the same concept okay now see like if we were and i'm just going to show you if i was doing this color right here I would keep this and I would start adding a little bit of black. black. This yellow right here actually has a little orangey tone to it. Mm -hmm. So this is that point where I'm almost gonna say, I'm gonna reach back here because I have this golden yellow here. You see how that yellow's got a lot more orange in it? Yeah. So we're gonna take a little bit of that and mix it in because we wanna get some more of that orange color going. Um, I feel like I want to hold up stuff so people can see it, but I would leave here looking like like I, I every day. Yeah. Getting so oh, yeah. close. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting so close. Also, why we bagged the shoe. I know this probably makes some people really anxious if they're about to see this. <laughs> Like with all that ink on that shoe? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'll just say this. The guy that I make shoes for, and I actually have a couple that do that, he does not watch me do it. He drops off the shoe and he walks out the door and he comes back when the ink is done. I can imagine. He doesn't, like, I'm sure it would just stress the heck out of him. This is when you start to get down to like you're so close. And you just start adding a little bit at a time. It, exactly. And there's no, and that's when people, this is when people will do that. Like, oh, it's kind of, that looks pretty good. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but I want it to be like, oh my gosh, that's exact. Like, this is um, it. And that, the big customer of mine one day, he came in, and this is like my ultimate compliment too. He came in and he looked at the ink swabbed on the paper and he looked at the shoe and he's like, I just don't know how she does it. Right. And it's like, Oh, that's what I want to hear. And so now you guys see how I do it. I just keep dabbling about until it happens. So close. So if you want to come, I don't know how you can get in there if the camera can see it that way. But we are like super. The color is like. In that, if you, you almost have to line up your eye here to there, I feel like I might add just a little more of that funk yellow and then we'll be there. We're gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. it is really close. All right, so we were able to see the process behind making a custom color. It's seriously so much fun. I've been standing back here and not participating and I even have ink on me. So I can only imagine how much uh, you are covered with when you leave work. Um, and so 
I can imagine it's a blast back here um, being someone who's interested in streetwear and fashion like this is a playground so it's so much fun thanks for having this here I'm super glad you came glad you have fun love my job we want people to come even if you're just thinking about getting into the garment decorating and industry we want to have an inviting environment. You're welcome to ask as many questions as you can possibly think of. Don't ever hesitate to call or come in and we'll demo for you, work with you. We want it to be a fun place to learn and then we'll support you as you build brands, those sorts of things. And because we made this awesome color, I want to invite you back um, and let's make a shirt um, on the next run out of your new custom chunky banana cream pie ink we made. Yes, that sounds so much like so much fun to come back. Um, I'm gonna draw something up and we'll get it on a shirt for next time. So that's, thank you, that's awesome. really awesome. Absolutely, I can't wait, it'll be fun. Yeah, uh, and we want people to know where you're located. Uh, and so uh, tell us where Screen Supply Central is at. So we are located really right in the middle of Phoenix. We're at 4350. Um, South 38th Street and we are in Suite 140 and because addresses can be tricky we are actually on Broadway just west of 38th Street. I've been telling people to look for the big van with the banner on it that says Green Supply Central but the good news is that our sign is going up in a couple of weeks and that will help you find us for the moment 4350 South 38th Street Suite 140 in Phoenix. Thanks again for having us here, and we'll be back here soon. Awesome. Sounds right. good. Yep. See you guys. Ready?